since Harry Potter came to our screens, for sure, owls have become one of those animals that people buy on a whim with no understanding of whatsoever. And they think an owl, especially an owlet, a baby owl, is going to be a really cute pet to have for their kids. Now, an owlet's only an owlet, even a big eagle owl, for about 12 weeks, and then it's an owl, and then it doesn't change for the rest of its life. That could be in the case of Pedro the Burrowing Owl, maybe 15 years, or up to 65 years for a European eagle owl. Your kids will be bored of that owl way before it dies of old age and it'll get rehomed. My best advice to keeping an owl, seriously, get something else. <laughs> Don't get an owl, get a pet rat. It's one of the most entertaining, friendliest pets and intelligent pets your children can have. It will never bite them and it lives for an average of about two years. So it will die about, I don't know, about a year and 50 weeks after you actually, after they get bored of it. Because kids have a sort of a two week attention span. If you must get an owl, do a lot of research in how to keep your owl. We're gonna give you five tips on how to keep your owl. Now, our owls are all free lofted. They live in aviaries, if you like. There's two owls here. There's a spotted eagle owl, he's 18, and a barn owl that's 11 that come out and outside events and are tethered on their perches during the day. And they've been used to being tethered for very short periods since they were owlets or, or fledglings. If you keep an owl tethered like you might a diurnal working bird, such as a Harris's hawk, that owl will be the most miserable owl because in the day you'll tether your owl and it'll look fine, it won't do anything. Oh, how relaxed, it doesn't bait, it doesn't try and fly away. It's an owl. It's designed to keep still all day long. At night time, that owl's brain, it doesn't work like a diurnal raptor. It doesn't understand being tethered at all and it just tries to go away and get to the end of its leash all the time ruins all its feathers on the ground trying to get back up again owls don't understand tethering and there's no excuse to keep an owl permanently tethered whatsoever so you need a nice free loft but then you have to think about how you're going to keep it so for sure fact number one don't don't keep an owl tethered if you think that's how you're going to keep an owl don't get an owl fact number two of how to keep your owl is don't keep your owls in your house your owls in your house don't keep your owls inside your house. Yes, in a large box while they're growing up and they're a chick for eight to 12 weeks, you can deal with the mess and the dust going down your lungs and the general smell. But after that, it's a really bad idea. Owls are smelly, messy, dusty things. They won't be particularly happy in your house, but for sure, you won't want them in there for long. So you've got to look at building yourself a reasonable sized aviary or free loft. So once you've done that, Fact number one, or reason number one of how to keep your owl, don't come to the front and feed your tame owl at the front all the time like this, because very soon, if it's a working owl that you've trained to fly to you, every time you walk past, it's going to fly into the front of its aviary. Now you can use bars, which are the best idea. You can use soft bounce netting. Depending on your owl, what works best. You can use zoom mesh, which is good for some owls, bad for others. But by openly walking past, and here's your food, you've now trained that bird to fly straight at the wire, smashing into the wire every time you go past, and damaging its feathers as it hangs onto the wire. So you either need a secret food hatch on a blank cloth side of the aviary that you can drop food through if you're not hand feeding it, or a darkened porch or alleyway. So keep watching. I'm going to feed Pedro, and you'll see that we don't openly feed him from the front. They have a service hatch at the back. Watch this space. Pedro. Pedro. So a service hatch, he's used to waiting by the door, not flying into the mess to get his food. Now, how you lay out your Avery depends on whether you're keeping owls as working birds, as ours are, they're trained to fly and they want to work with us and fly with us if you like. Or as aviary birds that maybe you're breeding and you just like to look at and they're sort of semi-wild in their enclosure I guess. So let's go next door and look at Spa and talk about how we set up our aviaries and why. Housing design. Our birds are working birds. They do their flying out there and they get to fly free about five days a week. So this is their bedroom or their hotel room. And certainly because they're tame, hand-reared trained owls, they don't feel the need to hide away from us or the public. If you're keeping 
owls for the sake of keeping owls or studying owls or breeding owls and you don't work with them hands on, they will react exactly like wild owls, even if you've hand reared them and they were super tame. If you turn them loose into an aviary and forget about them and just feed them well and maintain their aviary, they will become mentally wild. They won't respond to you in quite the same way as a bird that you interact with on a daily basis. And for sure, certainly if you're going to breed them, they're going to need somewhere to hide that's really naturalistic. An old open log, a big nest box, that kind of thing. Our owls just want shelter. They don't hide away from us. So for our owls, we've got somewhere higher, well sheltered. We've got perch low down where we can come in and pop the food if we're not taking them out that day. Obviously we've got baths where they can bathe and drink, they don't need to drink. Don't be fooled into thinking I don't need to give my birds water because they don't need to drink. Birds of prey don't need to drink. They do drink and they do bath. Always have water. But if you look at the aviary, it's relatively open. It's not full of branches and trees and shrubs because all that does is an aviary environment is completely take the space away from the bird. They don't come out in an aviary like this and think, oh I've got 10 minutes, I'm going to fly around because it's fun. Rubbish. Birds of prey don't fly much for fun, that's for sure. It's not it's dangerous to them. They're burning calories. They don't know when they're going to catch the next meal. So keep them relatively open and airy, but with well thought out perching. Somewhere high up in a corner, sheltered. Somewhere low down. Somewhere where they hop out of their water, having a good bath. They can jump onto a rock or a log and dry up a little bit. Because sometimes they get so wet they can't fly very far until they've dried their wings a bit. So aviary design, things to think about open and spacious, somewhere more enclosed and more overgrown if they're owls you're keeping as, as breeding birds or aviary birds only. You need to think about the roof and the species of owl. And I'm going to say fact number four or reason number four of how to keep your owl is think about the roofing of your enclosure. Birds in captivity that were born here in England or bred or hatched here in England, they don't think to themselves, oh wow, you know, it's raining. I'm a desert species. This is an African spotted eagle owl. It comes from relatively arid, dry environments. When it rains, its deep rooted DNA often tells it that's a great time to have a damn good shower and clean yourself. It doesn't realise that in the UK, the rain means it's going to freeze its wings together because it's actually the middle of winter at night. It doesn't equate that. So if it's a bird from an arid tropical region, personally, I pretty much go for a fully enclosed roof. If not, the bird will get wet in the rain and it will do so even in the middle of winter. And then it's either gonna get hypothermia or more likely lose the ends of its wings. It's gonna get wing tip edema, which is basically frostbite. People lose their fingers in Arctic conditions sometimes birds lose the end of their wing, it will die or at least never fly again. So think about your roofing, fully enclosed and dry, light panels so it's still light. If it's a, a British bird or a, a European species or an American species that's used to cold and rain, then maybe only roof half the aviary. So the rain can come in, it can naturally shower if it wants to, the rain will wash the substrate through for you, it's getting even more natural sunlight and don't get me wrong, Nocturnal animals sunbathe just like diurnal animals. Toads sunbathe, owls also sunbathe. Make sure plenty of perching is under the closed off half of the roof. Even for those birds of prey or those owls that come from colder, wetter climates like the UK. Give them shelter for sure. Tropical or arid region owls, I would always go for a fully enclosed roof. It's better for their welfare for sure. So, barn owl, this is Lily. Barn owls in the UK are the most commonly kept species of owl. They cost so little, people do buy them on a whim, and they're bred in far too great numbers, really, in captivity. So demand is high, but supply is higher. Don't you bite me? And they're incredibly cheap. And they're relatively small, and people think, that's great. And of course, most people love barn owls. Nothing else like them, is that heart-shaped face? Very different from all the other owls in the world. You've got really two groups of owls. You've got the barn owl family and all the others put together in another one. Barn owl here like Lily, often people get them with the idea they're going to train them and fly them like we do here at the Falconry Centre. If you're going to keep an owl and you're going to try and fly that owl and train it, then you need to really do a lot of research before you get your owl. 
on basic falconry practices of training birds of prey, certainly by books on training owls. Jemima Parry Jones wrote a good one. And read what you can about basic falconry designs and skills, really, skill sets anyway. If you're going to fly your owl free, most people actually think they'll fly them free in their gardens. I've got a nice long garden. I'll let my barn owl, I'll train it to fly up and down the garden. Now, as any falconer will tell you, if you're flying birds of prey free, you need to use telemetry. And to give you some idea of cost, in the UK right now, 2020, a barn owl's worth about 80 to 100 pounds each for a barn owl chick to hand rest. Really cute for 10 weeks. Then it looks like this forever. Um, it's going to cost you 120 pounds upwards for a transmitter to cable tie to its anklet while you fly it free. And it's going to cost you three... 100, 400, 500 pound upwards for a radio transmitter receiver, the telemetry set, which will track your lost owl. And you're gonna think, hang on, the owl cost me 80 quid, I'm not spending five to 800 pounds on telemetry, I can buy another owl for that. People actually think that, how utterly callous is that? People actually do behave like that in the UK. So the cost of having an owl that you're gonna train isn't the cost of the owl, it's the cost of its amazing enclosure you're gonna build it, and the upkeep. This needs a lick of paint. The paint we use is 40 quid a tin. Goodness me, just for some paint. Your owl's only 90 quid. The owl purchase is nothing. Think about the housing, the feeding, and if you're going to fly it, you've got to learn some basic falconry skills and you've got to learn how to use and you've got to buy telemetry. People will tell you, I fly my barn owl in my garden. They fly it there for two years, never lost it. They will. You might lose it the first time you fly it free in your garden or you might lose it the 2,000th time you fly it free in your garden it'll get spooked it'll go over the hedge you can't walk though it's not the countryside you've got to get permission or you've got to be able to access the gardens next door and so on and so on you can't go in a straight line as soon as a pack of crows which is called a murder of crows for good reason see that owl that captive naive barn owl of yours or whatever small owl it is they're going to set about killing it for sure Ow. Don't fly owls free without telemetry and without a reasonably good working understanding of falconry skills and practice. I realise that some of these how-to videos sound quite condescending and patronising. And if you're a skilled falconer, of course they are, you know what you're doing. You don't need me to tell you some ideas of how we do things. The reason I moan or discuss things that can go wrong and come across condescending and patronising isn't because we've always done everything perfect and we don't think you will or other people don't. I've been keeping owls since I was 16. I've been flying birds of prey for, uh, diurnal birds of prey if you like, since I was 20. All the things that can go wrong that I condescendingly say are all mistakes I've made myself. Stupid, stupid mistakes that no falconer wants to admit. The wealth of experience here is built on mistakes. Don't make those mistakes. I've been lucky. Often, things I've done wrong, my birds have survived. Very often, the birds will pay the ultimate price. So when people are telling you things about falconry or keeping owls or animals that you don't want to hear because you want to crack on and you want that animal anyway, Stop and heed the advice. Facebook is full of forums and groups where people ask the same questions to lots of different people. And they, they won't listen to the advice. They want to hear the answer they want to hear. And eventually they'll find someone like-minded to themselves that will give them the answer they want to hear. And they'll take it. But they'll have ignored the other 200 lots of advice that were good advice. Now, I'm sure you know, these people are called assholes. Don't become one. Hope you enjoyed that. Do your research before getting any animal, especially an owl. Go on then. I can't have my glove, my hand. What a beautiful, beautiful animals. There's way better animals to keep than owls. Way better.